So, Matt, do you buy it? Do you think this is finally when everything is coming together for the Sixers? Uh, I mean, on paper, it looks good. Uh, I've always said that their maturity level and experience level were the two things that worried about me, uh, that I worried about. But mm -hmm. experience, they've continued to gain. Uh, they were, you know, three bounces away from going to the finals. Um, maturity levels is what I'm looking for this year. Um, I love to hear Embiid's lost 25 pounds. I've been following Ben Simmons a lot on Instagram this summer, and he's just been playing, playing basketball, looking very dominant, physical. Uh, like he said, not afraid to shoot. My whole thing with him has always been in his head. It, it, yeah. He's been his uh, own worst nightmare with uh, shooting. So they have the pieces. They have a great coach. I didn't realize how much heartbreak Brett Brown has suffered. Oof, right? Jewish coaching That's career, crazy so to he, hear him describe he, all of that. That's a lot he, to he, be on the sidelines for. He's definitely do. So uh, they have uh, just as good a chance as anyone else in the NBA this year to win the finals. you got to be on good teams to experience heartbreak. So at least right. there's yeah. that. You, know, you don't experience <laughs> heartbreak when you're tanking. Uh, Which he's also experienced. <laughs> I, a lot of that. Um, I'm scared. I'm scared that Jimmy Butler was their entire crunch time offense when it really counted against Toronto. Mm -hmm. I'm scared about Joel Embiid's conditioning. I'm scared about Ben Simmons' jump shot. I'm scared about how weird this team is. But I think they're going to the NBA Finals. <laughs> Boom. I'm picking them to go to the Finals. Boom. I just think their talent and their size is overwhelming. I think they should have the best defense in the NBA. Joel Embiid should win Defensive Player of the Year. And they're just going to bludgeon people. Now, it could it could all blow up, but I, I like their team. I'm scared by how much I like their team. I'm frightened. <laughs> you look frightened. I'm a little frightened. Right. Matt, who do you want who's there now taking the last shot? If there's a game, you've got to win the game. <sighs> Who do you want it from the roster now? Because last year it was Jimmy Butler, and he's not there anymore. Uh, I, I would probably go with, in, with Embiid. Uh, you know, I, I think last year he, he fell in love with the jumper a lot. I think he needs to get back on the post because he's the most dominant post player, you know, with DeMarcus Cousins being with his injury situation in the game. Um, it's going to be interesting to see because, you know, Horford's another big that loves to float on the outside, but he's someone that can knock jumpers down. And then Tobias Harris, I'm looking for, Tobias Harris just flies under the radar. Very yeah. talented, has bounced around, but a very talented player. And I think now that... Jimmy Butler's gone. I think there was a little internal, whether people said it or not, kind of little competition between those guys. Jimmy Butler's gone. Uh, Tobias is there, so he's definitely going to be a formidable person to be able to take that last shot as well. Yeah, Brett, Brett Brown at a, a media luncheon yesterday mm -hmm. said the answer to that question is going to be Joel Embiid. Okay. He's going to be the crunch time option, which raises a really interesting question. Can you play inside out in crunch say, time in the man. NBA yeah. in different 2019? Game. It's a different game. But you stole my point. I completely agree with you. The guy we'd never talk about is Tobias Harris. And I think given that he can create a little bit off the dribble, he can run, pick, and roll. He's a good outside shooter. It's a big, big year for him because some of those moments, like it or not, are going to belong to yep. him. He's got to be their spacer in so many ways. I mean, they've just, they, they've changed. It's going to be interesting to see how it all goes down, but I, li I like the... I like the firmness. NBA Finals, both of you guys. I love it. According to Caesar Sportsbook, they don't agree with you guys, actually. The Bucks have the best odds of winning the Eastern Conference with the Sixers coming in second, though, followed by the Celtics and the Nets. So, Zach, you said Sixers. Bucks, though, I know you think highly of. Is this really a two-horse race that I'm looking at here? Yeah, Bucks sixers would be an incredible series, I think. It, and, and I do think it's a two-horse race. It, look, the Bucks can make the Finals. It's, it's a toss-up to me. And, and Boston would be the next team but to me, Boston is one player away. And if they could ever find a way to trade for an impact big man, they become like a Like Al Horford? Well, okay, maybe. <laughs> I don't think that trade is going to be on the table for them. <laughs> but, uh, but they could butt into this conversation. But this would be an incredible, incredible matchup. I mean, the Bucks are loaded still from last year, and then the Sixers are loading up. So we'll see. I think the Bucks are, you know, just have just as uh, good a shot as the Sixers do. I think obviously losing Brogdon is going to be a big piece, although he was hurt leading up to the playoffs. You know his importance for that team. Um, Giannis's development on the offense of filling those holes, those gaps that he had in his game are going to be a big, you know, we're going to have to wait and see if he did, which I'm sure he worked very hard on this summer. So I definitely think it's a two-horse race um, until KD is back healthy being, you know, at least 85, 80, 85 percent of what KD is. I don't see, you know, Brooklyn being a contender. And then, like you said, Boston's, I don't know if it's one piece or just really understanding who they are right. from being away from being That's a could be, It could be that. Contender. could be as simple right. as chemistry. And, and, and Hayward, if Hayward is Utah Hayward again, yeah. then they become really interesting. People I mean, the, underestimate how talented he was. I had to guard him all the time in Utah, <laughs> and he is one of the best wings in the game if he's healthy. But yeah, no. I mean, look, last year it was four teams, right? We saw, especially at the trade deadline, all those four teams at the top of the East make these frenzied moves, and obviously the Marcus Hall move yeah. in Toronto worked out. We will see what happens this time around. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.